this is for nipples. And it's, oh my God, no, the funniest thing. So Zara, my manager, was at my house. Yeah. She's pregnant. So she kept pointing at this and I had a videographer at my house too. And she was like, oh, and I was like, why? It's nipple cream. Like, you can borrow some if you want. And I thought she was pregnant yeah. and wanting it. She thought it was Jamie's Pearl's cream. And she was like, why do you have it out on display? <laughs> <laughs> what is that Pearl's cream called? It's called something. Something similar to homeoplasmy. Oh, my God. What is it called? Why do these boys, like, <laughs> so much? Like, just relax. Apparently, it's because that people, blokes, sit on the loo for, like, 25 minutes on their phones. 100%. That's all it is. Yeah, Jamie's now. How men's... What? I thought that pulse was from squeezing your butt so much. Like so tight, or cycling, people say. And when you're pregnant, you get it. Why do we get it when we're pregnant? That's a random... For fuck's sake, we get enough when we're pregnant. Don't yeah, I know. Pulse down on this mental, well. mental, mental. No, what I get when I'm cycling, not like ever cycle. When have you ever? <laughs> ever, what, a Boris bike, like twice a year, No, max. no, when I was like younger and we would like go on family trips. Oh my God. Okay, wow. There's literally... Quite happened. the Tour de France over here, yeah. Quite, this honestly might have happened once in my entire life. But the bruising on my vagina is next to none. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think I've cycled enough to get a serious bruise on my vagina. My sister can't ride about it. Falls off, terrified of them. Really? Um, it's quite the skill running a bike. It's very scary. Oh I God, really no, credit it's credit really, where credit's due funny. to people who ride a Boris bike because I'd be so scared in London. I get on the back Especially of Toby's line bike. So he'll cycle on his like stand up and I sit on the bike with my legs out to the side. <laughs> when we're drunk, we always go home like that. If we can't get on the scooter. That's it. It's so fucking dangerous. Don't ask me. And he's always <laughs> and I'm always like freaking out. And he's like, shut up, just get on. And he's just like so firm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And then why do you have your legs up? A car comes down, boof, chop those little tits. We don't want well, to. No, it's like just going up basically Porsche Bella or something. Like it's not Quite anything crazy. Like do you remember? Oh no, you weren't there when we had film, um, we filmed in South Africa, or Buenos Aires. That was no, it. it wasn't there for either of those. And we did, that was what the first time I went on a line bike. They weren't in England at this point. And oh we would God. bomb around Buenos Aires. You mean a su- scooter? It was a scooter, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, quite yeah. different, but still. So fun, those were the days. Scooters are great. Not fun we did a half an hour journey, two of us on a scooter the other day, but all on like the back streets. What, it was you lovely. and I? No. Me <laughs> I really got confused. I was like, you and I did we? You would have believed me if I could convince yeah, you that. Yeah, I would have my, my short term memory like yeah, you. Yeah, me too. It's so fun. shocking. I don't know what we're doing. We need Why to get am I Jingo crying Bill as well? Bauer. You're not that funny right now. Why am I crying? <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Maybe it's aircon in the room. It's not that cold in here, though, is it? <laughs> it's anything is quite warm in here. Right, anyway. Right, okay. It's Friendsgiving. I can't wait. Also, we booked in our Christmas special. Well, there's any shop talking. You so, are loving this Christmas special. It's, she, I'm honestly, really excited to do the Toby Car for you guys. She can't stop talking to me about it. I'm really excited. <laughs> I want to try some... I also don't eat pork anymore. Oh, why? Parasites. <laughs> also, you know pork is the same molecular formula as humans. So actually, if you're eating pork, you're basically a carnival. Yeah, is but you know what we drink? I drink cow's milk and it's a bit odd. Cannibal. So. Cannibal. cannibal. Do you remember Cannibal Lecter? That was Hannibal Lecter. Oh, uh, I never watched that. I think he did eat people. Well, yeah, obviously, that, hence the name. No, that's Cannibal. This was Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, but what other would be... I think because he put other people's... He killed them, put their skin over him. Fucking weird. Okay, right, let's get on to it. Yeah. So Friendsgiving, obviously. Well, I've actually celebrated Friendsgiving every year because Thanksgiving, my parents are never really around, so... Friendsgiving is just basically you spend Thanksgiving what you do it with your mates. It's quite nice. I've never ever done anything for Thanksgiving in my entire life. What what day is it's Thanksgiving? The last Thursday in November. Right. Okay. Um, I only started doing it because my brother at the time had an American girlfriend and she was over with us at the time. So then my mum like did the whole Thanksgiving the turkey, roast, the turkey, everything, and the we yams. did yams, which is sweet potato and marshmallows on the top in the oven. It sounds weird. It's fucking good. Wait, wait, wait. My whole life I've wanted to know what a yam yeah, is. That's it. Sweet potatoes mashed, and then you put um, mini That's marshmallows on the top, like... put them in the oven, and they come out all crispy. And it sounds gross. It's more well, next I can level it delicious. Would be delicious, but it's very sweet. You surely. would love it, yeah. But it's then the sweet with like the savory of the gravy and like the. Pot- I can't describe. It's delicious. Okay, what other things do you have with Thanksgiving? It's just a completely normal roast is what we normally do. But then we just did the yams with it. You said your family celebrates now consistently Thanksgiving. Well, my mum quite likes it now because. It means, because if we don't spend Christmas like with um, the rest of the family in the UK, because we normally are skiing for it, so she then uses that as an excuse. It's like quite a nice, just quite a nice thing to do, really. We must do something. Why Friendsgiving. Do Toby Carby part one, Friendsgiving. Well, we're doing this is Friendsgiving now, hon. We should have had a mini... Ra- oh! 
a mini rose with some. I should have bought you some in. yams. Yeah, maybe you make me some yams. Maybe I make you some yams. I would love that. that with purple my... sweet potatoes, so we live forever. Yes, and the sugar just is cancelled out by the purple. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you think, Melissa, makes a good friend? Oh yeah, we're gonna go through some questions. Yes, yeah. cutesy. <laughs> um, someone that's <laughs> honest with you. Someone that makes you laugh. Yeah. Someone that you can trust. Someone that you can also sit in silence with, I think is heavily important. Me, that's up there with one of the most important. I hate but, it when you have to try and think of things and you're like, oh, I feel awkward next to you, I have to talk. Yeah, but that's like not really a good friend when you feel awkward around someone, is it? Exactly, so it makes a good friend by being like, you yeah. can just sit in silence and be comfortable with them. What do you think the best quality in each other? Oh, what do I'll you ask you this. Okay, fine. What do you think the best quality in each other is? Well, I say what my best quality is too. Yeah. Okay, I think you can sit in silence with me. Yeah. <laughs> We don't, I, but I could if I need I to. I think I could sit in silence with you. That's one of your, my, your best qualities. But Snore. also, um, <laughs> you're we, we, you're no, no, like, you're, I so can sit in silence with you. Okay, anyway, we um it's incredibly honest. Yeah, we're always very honest with each other about stuff. Yeah. And we're always very complimentary. I feel like we bring each other up a lot, which I is think, yeah. lovely. And we laugh every time we're on phone, even when we say bye. We're yeah. like, bye. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't really know what it is. Weird. It's just good vibes. Let's give vibes Let's around. Just give vibes around. Okay. And what's the worst? Oh, uh, I don't know what your worst is. You clearly know what mine is. Uh. <laughs> no, what is it? That when we try and do a double date, Jamie's always like double books or something. And it's yeah. really fucking well, annoying. That's not really that... Sophie's direct. That's very annoying. It's not it? her, but you know what? You're an extension of your other half. So it's your problem. So. <laughs> Surely mine is that I like start a conversation and then I'm like, rrr, 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 but I do the it. same thing. So yeah. it's like quite easy for my mind to follow that. Um, I'll come back to you when you next piss me off. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 okay. Is it always sisters oh. before misters? Um, depends. Obviously you're married now. I wouldn't like cancel a plan that I'd made with Toby to like, be with you no I almost think the better friends you are like the more you can understand be like, I'd be like no I need to be and you would want me to flourish your, my relationship yeah yeah I don't feel like maybe a thing of the past would be like you're not gonna go for a guy you know when you're at school I'm not gonna go for this guy that like you dated two days ago like, I'm gonna put my friendship with you first okay in that respect yes have you ever lied to one another to get them to for one another to get in a lot of trouble. Yes. yes. Loads We've of done times. that loads of times. <laughs> also, standing back to the Bain and Chelsea days, Christ alive. Oh, all the time. Wow, I would literally just a web of lies. We would both just sit there in silence knowing exactly what we're both down like. Me and Sophie were probably the only one of the only two we cast members only, that wouldn't fuck each other over. We so would we would never. know everything in life for each other about so much. To stuff. the producers, everyone took it to oh, the yeah. grave. No one, no one in the cast. It was, was all there. corrupt. It was corrupt, but we stayed loyal. We did all. stay loyal. Melissa knew pretty much from the beginning when yeah. I was with Jamie. I knew. I, I, I told you without telling you. Yeah, I you did. Hold it, it yeah, in. I know. And also, like, we went out together, and like, you guys were like, I was like, I knew, but like, obviously, we didn't know. So then my producers were like cornering you, and like being like, you have to be honest. And I was like, guys, it's nothing to tell. Oh my gosh, yeah, that night we went to Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like kissing, kissing, kissing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you told me something in the loo, and then you were like, but nothing. Yeah. Like you looked at me like. Like this. Yeah, I think I was like, <laughs> no, oh but the God. first time it happened in Cape Town when I came back and you were like, and I said, I kept dropping hints. Like I was telling it you was in a riddle. It was just so plainly obvious. And you were like, what the fuck's going on? And I was like, but then. Ooh. I know it was like you were telling me, but it was all in code. Have you ever had difficulties making friends? I feel like also we've had the same friends forever. No, I we, have. Babe? I actually have. What? I grew up with a holiday home in Spain. And I used to go there every summer and they all spoke Spanish and I thought they were so cool Aww. and I just really wanted to be involved. She was but a I wannabe just, Spanish girl. Yeah, and I just was like the English giri they used to call me and I didn't, and they called me Sofa. <laughs> I know, and I really struggled to make friends with them. I, I, weas Aww, I really I persisted. I weaseled my way in, but like I just wanted to be them and be friends with them and I just wasn't. Okay, so that's good that you know what that's like. So how was the, how, how did that feel for you? It was horrible, but also <laughs> quite exciting. It was like a mission. When I first joined Made in Chelsea, that was like going into a lion's den of like cool older people. Oh yeah, yeah, me too. And it was quite cliquey, and then but then Sophie was like the only person that was nice to me, and then we became best friends. So me fine, too. But... I wasn't friends with anyone on, no. on Chelsea until Croatia, really. Yeah. Again, it's just one of those things that you sort of just get thrown into the lion's den. 
That was quite scary. What's the easiest way to make friends? I would just be yourself. It's really hard actually Not try when you too feel hard, nervous. But then also like put the effort in. It's difficult. There's nothing worse than someone that's trying too hard to like. Then you also you just but then you don't want to look you don't want to not try and then you no you have to make the see. effort but you don't want to try too hard where it's like do you know what I mean I think you've got to um like not emotionally but you have to have a gut feeling of who actually will be your friend like I knew in Chelsea you were gonna be my friend like we were gonna be real friends yeah so that was easy for me and once I was we were friends then. I sort of had the confidence to, to be friends with, with other people. people. But I don't think if you, I think you know if you're going to actually have like a really good friendship with somebody. Yeah. And I think that's the person you can be really open with and like. Yeah, once you've got one that you get on well with, then it normally just stems from there slowly. Yeah. Then you sort of work your way into other friendship groups and like meet other people and it's quite nice. Yeah. But like you have to have that breakthrough. Yeah, you do. I think just be yourself and try and be happy. Yeah, and also and like. light don't do what I tried to do when I wanted to be friends with those Spanish people. Like, <laughs> don't try and be them. Like, I was like, oh my God, they're so cool. I've got to be them. I'm like, honestly, I'm trying to think of what I they used to do. I also think there's... Like, a... everything they used to wear, like, the long... Like, they were so, like, madrid I just yeah, tried yeah. to be them. Like, just be yourself. Just be yourself. I also think sometimes you'll get, as you say, you'll get a good energy from someone if they're a nice person or not. And they'll, like, make an effort to speak to you, like, right? Yeah. If you have good people. So... If if the people don't want to be friends with you, that's on them, and then they're probably not nice people. But you'll hopefully, it was like not so hard to make friends. Like humans want to be nice to one another normally, you know. Yeah, and I will say there's something about like, like I'm 29 now. There's something about now. I will say I think it is like a, not a rite of passage, and it kind of being young is amazing and it's the funnest time, but it also kind of sucks because you don't know who you are. Yeah. So trying to be friends with people is really hard when yeah. you don't even know who you are or what you want to do. Or, and I feel like suddenly, I know everyone says it, yap, yap, yap. When you're in your thirties, like you suddenly don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. Yeah, Like I true. really do feel like I'm coming into that age now, but before it's like, oh, I've got to be cool or I've got to be totally. there. And I also feel like probably now you're married, you probably feel a bit more like that too a bit more comfortable in your own skin, like, I don't care what other people think kind of thing. Yeah, because you're a bit of You're a just unit. a bit more settled. But I do think it's something that comes with age too. And totally. unfortunately, it's kind of something everyone goes through because you just don't know yourself until you're... Completely. I feel like it's a rite of passage that we all have to... And then that forms us when we're older and that's why we just become better people. Yeah. Touch word. Okay, dilemma one. Recently, I was a bridesmaid for one of my best friend's weddings. Let's call her Sarah. Sarah and I have been best friends for well over 10 years and we have been through some really tough times. She was my bridesmaid a couple of years back when I got married also. Lovely. When I became a bridesmaid, I was her closest friend. But during the lead up to the wedding, especially the end, things changed. Oh. I began to distance myself because I didn't like the person Sarah was becoming. She was particularly particular about everything and she became mean oh, no. for example when another bridesmaid got pregnant she said to me how annoying couldn't she wait <gasps> now she's going to stand out in the photos <gasps> no that's awful she even told her sister who was already extremely insecure about her way that she's the reason no no that she is the reason she cannot find a bridesmaid dress and she needs to lose weight for her wedding <laughs> Wow. Savage. I actually can't. Sarah wanted everything to be perfect, even at the expense of others. My frustration grew towards the towards the last month. Sarah planned this extravagant hen which weekend, which cost us all a fortune. I opened up to her at the beginning to tell her I couldn't afford it, but didn't it didn't seem to bother bother her. I still had to find a way to pay. What the fuck, Sarah? <laughs> With four weeks to go to the wedding, Sarah hadn't found bridesmaid dresses yet. I decided to send her to the shop my sister, who was also got, getting married, got her bridesmaid dresses from. I told Sarah which dresses my sister had bought so she knew how to stay clear. Before you knew it, she's gone and chosen <gasps> the exact same dresses for her wedding. No. Without even asking if it was okay with my sister, who was also going to be attending Sarah's wedding. Sarah! What the F? No, no. I'm pissed. I stay quiet. I stay quiet because Sarah was stressed and I didn't want to add to that, but I was upset. When we get to the wedding rehearsals, I am all of a sudden moved from second bridesmaids to fourth for the ceremony walk-in. I asked her if something was wrong and her response was, I just want everyone to have a turn being close to me. You'll get your turn at the reception. Wait, she lost her eye. <laughs> we get into the wedding night. I come and sit down at the reception and find I've moved, been moved again. Oh. 
Now, usually I wouldn't care, but at this point I wanted to cry and go home because I only ever tried to do the right thing by her, but she was just being so mean. My husband thinks I've outgrown this friendship anyway and told me that Sarah's not a friend he wants me to have with how she talks and treats her friends. Fine. I agree. But we have been friends for so long and I feel maybe the wedding just got to her and she was caught up in it all. Do I approach her and tell her what's wrong or do I focus on more positive things and change in my life and cut her out? I think you don't have to cut her out necessarily. I would approach her. I do think weddings send you certain things. Definitely send me. But like being super mean to your bridesmaids and doing stuff like that. It's really not nice. But I do think you, why not, what, what, what would be the point in not telling her? Like, sure. A, you be helping her. B, give a chance to the friendship. C, give give a, give someone the opportunity to see. That Explain wrong themselves goes. as well. Like maybe she'll just be like, I just don't like know what I was doing or saying. Like I just wanted it all to be so perfect, and obviously that doesn't matter. But I think you don't have to. I don't also don't think you necessarily do have to say anything. Like you could just sort of take a rough step back. And just wait for her to come to you. And if she's like, look, is there anything wrong? And then you can be like, look, no, I obviously still want to be friends with you. But I was just a bit upset with the way things went at the wedding. But like, obviously, I love you so much. And see if she then opens up. Or you just hope that things have changed after the wedding. And then she'll just go back to being the normal her. Yeah. Because now there's no wedding. There's no stress. And you might just be like, oh, sick. Now that, that's over. There's nothing for us to worry about. Yeah, but I also do think you might hold resentment if you don't open up about it. Just maybe slightly, like I yeah, maybe I would give it some time and then maybe be like, just by the way, this upset me. It's yeah, moving me down the slips her way back into the friendship. You might be like, hold a bit of like, yeah, well, we need to discuss this. Like that's not okay. You've really upset me at the wedding. Blah blah blah. Yeah, fair, but I don't think you have to cut her out. I think that's probably a bit extreme. But sometimes. I think if you've been friends for a really, 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 really long time, sometimes people do grow up apart and that's fine. But I think in this scenario... I think scenario, she continues behaving this way. Yeah. You might have to cut her out because totally. that's not serving you and that's yeah. just not positive. Let's just see how it goes. I think this is one big thing that she's had to do and plan. The choosing of the bridesmaids dress annoys me. How moving her best friend away mm. is so mean. It's saying, don't it pisses worry, me off, don't get me wrong. I'm angry for you. And saying, don't worry, you'll get time with me at the reception. Sorry, I'm, I, I'm, I like, am the princess. You'll get time. Your time will come. Fuck me. If you said that to me at your wedding. You would literally snick at me. I would lose my shit. I'd be like, who the fuck do you think you are? Your time will come. <laughs> it's actually... It, it's honest, outrageous. It's outrageous. I feel the frustration because it's just like, get off your high horse. But now but her wedding's over. Can't, she can't when be it's doing someone's that. wedding, you can't really say something. I so know, she you must have been to swallow. Like, so true. Yeah. I don't even think... When we walked down the aisle, there wasn't... I don't think Sophie didn't have anything to do with it. She was, she was just like, I'm just going at the back and all I need is to, to carry my dress. The wedding planners sort, sorted out where we were going. Oh, they did it by height. Oh, yeah. Didn't did they? they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like the two short ones at the front. That's why me and Emily were the first to go because we were the shorter. It went by height. Who was with Izzy then? Bella? I think so. And Chrissy and Emily were together. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It was all by height. And then Georgia going, I don't know why, but the photos of her holding my belt. Bless her. Made me cry. And her dress was so long as well because she forgot to have it taken up. So she had oh. to hold up her own dress and yours. Sweet. Tactics. tactics. It was good tactics that she had there, actually. Right, dilemma too. My dilemma is that my best friend of almost 20, wow, 20 years never asks me questions about myself anymore. Uh-oh. I have called this girl my best friend since we were five years old and we're now 24. That's super cute. However, for the last four years... We have slowly drifted and not caught up as much. She moved away. I have a partner and a really hectic job. And I admit I have been avoiding catching up with her because all she does is talk about herself. I actually do have one friend like this. Um, I don't think I'm a boring person. I have stuff going on and I run my own business. I go traveling with my partner and all the usual family drama to chat about. But I just feel she doesn't care what's happening in my life and she just wants to gloat about her life and work. We had dinner and I began to see how long it would take. It's when you notice it, you can't unnotice it. I began to see how long it would take for her to ask me something. I don't know if I message her and tell her that she doesn't seem very interested in my life because she doesn't actually ask me any questions, but I'm a bit worried about cutting her off as I don't have loads of friends. Any advice would be appreciated. Thanks, girls. That's really this is tough. tricky because I have some friends who don't ask me anything, but I'm not bothered about it because I actually sometimes no, don't they like... No, I bet they do. <laughs> I bet they do. Yeah, I actually can't think of anyone I know who doesn't ask me anything. I don't. I, I only really, have I one person can't. I know that likes, and it's so plainly known. Not even like, how was your weekend? Like, what did you do last night? Yeah, do you I know actually what I mean? don't have anyone in my life that doesn't ask me anything. But I'm thinking I wouldn't mind, but that also would annoy me if I knew. 
But regardless, it's rude, right? It's, this is fucking rude. And when you notice something, you can't unnotice. And they're just non-stop talking about themselves. I would, I would just... It's really bad manners at the end of the day. It's just rude, really. It's really rude. It's but so But how can you strange. say that to someone that's really awkward? I just probably like wouldn't. That. I would actually just probably Me have too. to take a step back. I just, I don't think it's something like, you're not going to feel bad about it because you're still her friend and no, nothing big's happened. And you're, I wouldn't like cut her out, but I just personally wouldn't enjoy those times. There's no point in meeting up with people. Like you've got to- You feel a bit drained when you leave. Protect your time. Like your time's valuable. Precious, yeah, totally. And like also your energy. Like that would just put me in a bad mood. You don't want to feel drained. It is draining when people. Oh my god, I'm really You're worried. You're sitting. Do I, not, do I ask you? You are so you? questions. Okay, good. I'm really freaking out now. I'm honestly. Oh, this is that. what you could do. This is what you could. This is what you do. I was like, <laughs> work on your work on your question. I know. You could meet up with, when you next see her. You could you could sit down and be like, oh my god, I've had like the worst day. Blah 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 blah. blah rant rant rant. And then you could be like, oh my god, I saw you know Emily the other day. She didn't ask me any fucking questions and actually really pissed me off. Then it will prompt her. Yeah, like how it's just done with me. To be like, oh shit, I don't ask questions. To be like, it was just, it's just really rude. And every time I see her, you can just tell a white line, make up a person. Every time I see her, she never asks any questions. And it's Good just idea. really, it's just really bad social skills. And like, you know, and then it will hopefully, if that doesn't do it, then I don't know what will, and you might have to maybe take a slight yeah, step Yeah, but maybe, back. like, refer to your mum rather than a friend you don't want to have being, well, no, like... maybe, like, a mum's friend or something. Be like, oh, my God, my mum's friend was around and my mum's just had enough because she's so draining totally. and I've noticed it too. She's around. Then it's nothing that will get back Personal. to being, like, oh, I know that friend of hers and then she knows yeah. something. So I think that's a good way of doing it. It's really hard because I honestly am having the fear of death. I don't no, ask you're people. you're so fine. Yeah, but that is quite hard for that. We other... ask each other too many questions. We're like, I want to know every detail of your day tomorrow and what did you do today? <laughs> like, it's too much. Yeah, we do. I'm, like... I'm not happy until I know everything you've got planned for yesterday. Or yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I need to know. I need to know everything. Yeah, we're it's... too nosy not to ask questions. That's our I problem. I sort of, like, get that vibe, that from you because I get nothing from Jamie. Like, I'll be like, so what did you eat today? Oh, and he'll be like... So annoying. Don't know. I don't think yeah, I've I eaten know, anything. Just... I'm like, well, you have, because you wouldn't be standing if you haven't. I'm like, what was for lunch? He's like, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Like, just no. And then I see him like do something, and I'm like, well, you didn't tell me you did, did that. that. He's like, oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm like, but how? It's it was just a couple lack hours. of detail. Yeah. Like we had this really fun birthday party at the weekend and I left quite early. Like I left like six. He he got home at like 12. I was like, details, everything. He was like, we're fun. I was like, oh my is God. that it? I need Give gossip me from something start to feed to off. finish. Yeah, I need to know what conversations happen. I wanted to know like where people sat. I want to know, did people order food at a certain point in the evening? Did someone get really drunk? Did someone say something a bit silly? Yeah. What music was playing? Like, I, I just need yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to find someone else like to give me the details. Yeah, you do. There's surely some more people in there you can get, get inside yeah. from. That's what I just need to know. I, I can't let them do things without me because I get nothing back. I get nothing <sighs> in return. <laughs> Sometimes there's huge things, like huge, huge things. Toby will tell me three weeks afterwards and yeah. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. How did you leave that information out? And then one of Toby's really good friends who I'm like kind of friends with now, I say I'm quite close with this like dating and whatever. And like, and like, he'll like tell me himself, but sometimes Toby will like relay the story to me. And I'm like, but how did it get to that point? Like, what did she then answer back yeah. to him when he said that? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, you don't ask the right fucking questions. You don't. So then I end up calling the friend like, I need to know probably everything just because it bothers me that I don't, I've got half the story. Can't sleep at night. No. I feel like <laughs> us girls are really detailed actually. Like I'm thinking of all of my friends. Yeah. Like I know detail oh for, God, to yeah. detail of I know, every part. I know that when they breathed in between sentences Same. and like the eye contact where I was doing that conversation. Yeah, and, but no boys. Like, well, boys, you're so boring. Just God, so give us what we want. We read Selfish everything brats. about everyone but that's maybe why also boys are maybe just a bit more like they just don't care they just don't care maybe we're really nosy but I'm sure all girls <laughs> are the same I, I just like a proper story to be told in a proper way it's I totally too much agree <laughs> <laughs> right I've got dilemma three alright <laughs> hey Sophie and Melissa <laughs> I have had a big drama which I need your help with. I'm part of a close group of girls. We met at uni, holiday together, and despite not all living together, living in the same place, we still chat every day and manage to meet up a lot too. Gorgeous. That's lovely. I live in Manchester and one of the girls who I'm less close with, let's call her Grace, said that she was moving to Manchester too. I'd had some issues with previous flatmates so I said that we should live together. 
With my job, I would get a pretty big discount on some clothes as well as getting some freebies from the office too. Lovely. When we would go out, Grace would often ask to borrow things that, and I'd obviously say yes as I would borrow some of her clothes too. Uh Uh-oh, I know this is going. But more often than not, Grace would misplace things (gasps) in the flat and she would give them back to me when she found them. Over the past year of living with her, she's lost loads of my clothes, which I was already pissed off about. How do you lose clothes if you're living in the same house? How do they go missing? I don't get that. Yeah, that's weird. Although it's quite quite me. So um. I really just got really angry then. I've also lost the strap of my bags and I'm the only one who just lives in my house. So that's just stupid. Happens. But I became furious when one of my best friends sends me, sent me a link to Grace's seat. Do you remember when I lost your Abercrombie and Fitch shorts? That's what you were thinking of in Croatia. No, and you it were wasn't like, in Croatia, hun. It, where was, it was Sri Lanka. Oh my God, you were so... It was up. the first day we got there. She where? put them on and then for the rest of the holiday I had no shorts. I was like, <laughs> fuck's sake. It's the first day. But, I, but that's why I'm feeling for Grace because I the fear. I was like, you know why? It's because we, we lost them somewhere in the resort. It wasn't like you lost them in your room. Yeah, every day you like. I was like, fucking. I don't have I anything saying, to wear. I kept saying, I know where they are. I know where they are. I didn't. Anyway, <laughs> should really get you another pair. But I became oh. furious when one of my best friends sent me a link to Grace's secret spicy Instagram profile where she was modelling my clothes and selling them on Depop. You're freaking killing me. Did you know that? When he you just well, I was slightly red ahead. Sorry, I saw selling them on Depop in caps. She doesn't know that we found the profile, but I feel so hurt every time I have to pretend to be friendly with her. That's, that's fucking dark shit. And that's stealing. No, no. I stopped letting her borrow my clothes, and I've already Good. started making plans to move out. But I'm pre- petty for wanting to get back at her. I don't want to break up our friendship group, but I don't want Grace in my life anymore. You must bring it up. Tell the other girls in the friendship group for a start, and you absolutely can because. It's all over the internet and all your friends have seen it and totally. co- shown it to you. Be like, I'm really upset. What do I do? And then just have a word with her. Be like, I'm so... I'd be like, you it, need I, to be It found. just makes me feel That's so like a... violated almost that you've yeah. been like, borrowing my clothes and selling them. For... No, what the fuck? I'm furious. There needs to be an enormous apology. She needs to give you all the money from all the money that she, she's made from stealing. selling your clothes. It's bizarre. But then also like trying to be sympathetic. There may be something deeper, like maybe she's having some financial issues and she can't pay the rent or something. And she's like, I don't know. But that, there's no excuse for Absolutely stealing. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I'm like, I'm You're, just trying, trying to understand to wa- why she would do that to a friend. But sometimes people are bad, you know? It's also just like so, ra- oh, that's actually giving me, me feel goosebumps. Re- yeah, me too. I really hate stuff like this. It just like, imagine if you found out someone was doing that. Imagine if I was doing that to you. No, it's so violating. And she's willingly being like, yeah, you can wear my top. Well, sorry, I've lost it. Imagine you, you just go on Depop up. and you find those Abercrombie shorts and me ordering them. I think <laughs> we can let the £20 shorts slide. If you go I'd be worried for you if you were trying to like, if you stole them, dissolve them. Oh, I'm yeah. really baffled. That is awful. I'm really upset for you. Really Same, I'm really sorry. I, I personally would cut that. I couldn't forget that. I oh my would... God, I have a confession. What? <laughs> what? What? Okay, right. A few years ago, it was my birthday. I was newly dating Toby, and you lent me like a cardigan. A cardigan. A cardigan. That's yeah. it. Cardigan. Black cardigan from Urban Outfitters. It, was, it wasn't very nice. I threw it away the other day in a wardrobe. <laughs> where I was still in my wardrobe. I know. And I put it I know in exactly. a new blogger's bag, and I was I... like, "She won't want that back." <laughs> I've never worn it. She's not going to wear it, and she Imagine doesn't even know just... it's missing. Oh my god, I can't even think that's which been, one. That's pushing three years ago now. I think yeah. I know exactly which one. Bit woolly, yeah, bit yeah, oversized, yeah, yeah, yeah. really bobbly, not nice. Bobbly, no, not it was nice. cropped. So yeah, cropped, but oversized yeah, shoulders. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I used to get a lot of compliments when Shit, I wore that. So no, I wouldn't wear that now. <laughs> Do you know though? I I really was looking for a black cardigan the other day and I honestly in my mind thought, I'm sure I had one. I, I don't know. I have no black clothes anymore. Oh, oh my God. The thief. You've lent someone a really nice denim jacket and you've never got it back. That really upsets me. That, because that was a one-off. That was It was on- a one-off, like, it was almost like an artist had like drawn on this denim jacket. It was fucking cool. Yeah. Was it like from Japan or something? It was, it was from, it was from a J- Japanese brand and they, the artist... Like, did the, a pop-up or something? He did one per item yeah, and I got one. it and it was not cheap. That and was, was one so, of my first like big I items I bought. I, I equally shared as much love for it even though it wasn't mine. I think I got to borrow it every now and then and now it's fucking gone. Because you lent it to the wrong person. Let that be a lesson to you guys. I know, but Don't I lend just, your clothes out. In my mind, I still think she must have it because I'm like... 
Where else is it unless she sold it? But she might have lost it. She would never have sold it. She might have lost. Yeah. I'd rather have to have it still and then maybe one day I'll get it back. Jesus, it's so annoying. So upsetting, right? I think karma will get you in the bum if you try yeah. and get back to her. So be the bigger person, get good karma. She might still and make unfortunately, wrong. karma will get her. Yeah. What's it called? Don't. Two make two wrongs don't make, make a right. right. But there's another saying along those lines. Don't make. What the hell is it? I think maybe that is just it, the saying. I think that's it. But yeah, I think we've got to take the mature route. But if I was you, I think the mature route would be to like confront her and be like, I need, yeah. you, I actually need, you need to pay me the money <laughs> from the clothes that you've made off of the money, the profit that you've made for a start. <sighs> uh, and if you still have the clothes, give them back. I agree. Or you could be the one to buy them all on Depop. And then walk and in. And then walk in. Yeah. And be like, I'm really upset. I walk in on them. I've had to buy my own clothes back and I expect you to refund me all the money for it. Shit, that's so good. And that's that is logistically right because she and should you be get paying your interest. Back. It's so it's beyond fucked up. I would buy every single item, put the address as your address. No, so don't because she'll know. Yeah, but she'll know anyway. And she'll be like, <gasps> imagine the stomach drop out oh, yeah. of her arsehole when she sees that it's a dr- she's got to send it back. She'll know. Busted. And then be sat in there. Drinking coffee, I know. Turn around on the on the like, swivelly chair, I know. Yeah. What's that thing? What's that? Oh, thing? oh, just when she's going to get her coffee, just put a post-it note on the thing. I, I know. know. <laughs> Damn, wig it. Or you could really freak her out. Or you could buy the exact same jumper and then wear it, or like top and then wear it. She'd be like, "What the fuck?" Oh or yeah, you just... steal it back from her room. Fucking go and steal them back. Just go steal them back so then someone else will buy them from Depop and she'll be like, I don't know where they've gone. Yeah. And you'll be, I don't wear them. And she'll be, then, and yes. then you just go, I went into a room and got all my clothes back. Why? Why do you need them? They're I'm mine. not going to lie. And I then she'll be like, but like... I've sold them. Yeah. Yeah. So many options. I also feel like, I don't think this that's... is fully breaking the law. Like you could genuinely report her to the police, maybe a step too far, but like, Depending on how far you, you want to take the matter. I'd have some fun with it first. And I don't think karma's going to get you for that because you're not like stooping to her level. You're just actually redeeming what is yours. Yeah, taking back what's rightfully yours. Yeah. With your hard earned fucking money. I think the safest so- option to do would be to go into her room and get her stuff. Also, this stuff is going to be nice design shit. Yeah, because why else is she selling it? It's so rude. Right, Ooh, moving on, moving great. on, moving on to friendship story time. I'm loving these friendship theme things. So here's a bit of backstory. I've been in a happy relationship for four years with my boyfriend and we've moved in together three years ago during lockdown. His best friend moved in with us about a year ago due to having nowhere to live. So the other day I was in the shower and the doorbell rang. I thought it was my boyfriend and he forgot his key. So I jumped out of the shower and threw on a small dressing gown. I opened the door and ran back up the stairs, not checking who it was. How stupid. I didn't even think it could be anyone else. As I got up to the top of the stairs, I looked. He was doing a quick look in and then looked away. My boyfriend's <laughs> best friend and also housemate caught a half-shaved vagina as I was running up the stairs. <laughs> no, <laughs> <I'm> absolutely. <laughs> oh, I see. So he like, looked in and looked away. No, no, sweet boy. Oh, no. My question is, do I love and die <laughs> my boyfriend or do I just leave it as if it never <laughs> It's also half-shaved. No, it's the boy. I don't know why that's so adorable that he was like, Kai, oh, 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 I didn't my see anything. God. It's also her boyfriend's best friend and the housemate. I would tell him. I think it's lols. I don't oh, no, no, no. So, so, Sorry, the half shave would kill oh me. Oh, God. So do I laugh it off and tell my boyfriend and leave it as is as it never happened? But to be fair, it's too funny not to tell him. That's the advice. Definitely tell him. Definitely tell him and tell, also, the, tell the friend. Be like the, the friend, friend. Be like, oh, my God. So sorry about that. Wait, what, did she have like a razor in her hand? Like she was mid shaving I've got no idea. That's so funny. That's so the sort of thing we would do. That not is checked. Just open the door. That is so funny. And the bo- and the friend looking and then looking away. It's just what boys do. I've had this so many times and they place <laughs> and they panic and look away. And you're, I don't really give a fuck about it. I've just had it and I'm like, no, like a girl wouldn't. I'd be like, what the hell if a boy opened the door with his willy out? Oh my God, yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, we'd be like, <gasps> I wouldn't be able to, so I would I'd be pissing like, myself laughing, but a boy like so politely looks away. Oh my God, bless they, him as oh. if he's never seen it. <laughs> it's funnier to bring it up. Handy P. I mean, that's similar sort of thing. Toby's brother seen me completely butt naked the first oh time I went God. to the family house. Terrible business. That's ac- <laughs> <laughs> That is like 
Oh, you just can't even talk about it's it. It's so good. It's so good. Right. Hi, lovelies. One of your Aussie fans here. I just wanted to write in about how my best friendships always seem to start with not liking the other at all when you first meet. Mm. Interesting. My best friend who I met at school was stuck together for most of our classes in year nine. I couldn't stand her. <laughs> but for some reason, by the end of that, the year, she had stuck and we were suddenly inseparable three years out of school and we are just as close. Oh my Lovely God, that's girls. gorgeous. That's gorgeous, but quite peculiar. Not, not in Really my... quite peculiar, but I think that's probably like initial sometimes first impressions are not good mm. it's as simple as that i don't really think i've ever had like utter beef with someone like at school where i just, no, just didn't like my school was very friendly like everyone kind of got on it wasn't a bitchy school no, luckily i'm very lucky mine. but the older the older people in my school were not nice like, oh yeah was mine was scary serious hierarchy ruby when i first met her i thought that she really hated me I met her at um, someone's wedding and I felt like she was really sort of standoffish with me. And then <laughs> the next time I saw her, I was like, oh my God, we're best friends. I think you told me that. Yeah, I was like, I met Ruby. I was like, I don't think she's that much of a fan. I was like, she didn't seem that friendly. And then the next time I saw her, she was just like the best girl ever. But some people can have a bit of a guard up and then come across in a certain type of way. Yeah, I think maybe I have that quite a lot when I meet people. No, I hope I don't have No, you're guard. so friendly, you joking. No, but not me, but maybe I find other people have a guard up. I definitely do have friends that if I'd been like, oh, scary. Yeah, and then yeah. two times me teenager, I'm like, oh my God, I freaking love totally. them. Totally. It's just like people have their guard up. You've got to, like, that's just... It's just something that people... And also it can come from a place of being, like, not... It might not be that rude, confident yeah. Or, like, them f f being, like, conscious of everything they're saying because they're, like, not nervous, but they're, like, aware of the fact that you don't know them. And then that's them coming across as quite stiff, which then can come across quite rude. Totally. <gasps> Tiny questions. I love these. Okay. Which celebrity would you like to be friends with and why? Oh, I can tell you Jennifer Anderson or Reese Witherspoon because oh, they look yeah. like good time gals. They Honest. do look like good they time gals. They look like, I feel like Reese would be our best mate. Totally. And I also would love Meryl <laughs> Streep to just be like in my but life at some sort. Same, of but like, I'm not sure me and her would be calling each other every day to tell each other what we're doing. No, neither, but I wouldn't with Jan Ann. I would think of Jan Ann as like a fun aunt. Okay, Reese, I kind of think I would. Okay, friends, Kylie Jenner, of. Oh, no, I think I'm going to go. I think she said, looks jokes. Maybe Hayley Bieber. I know she's a bit boring, but I just kind of want to see like what they do every day from a nosy perspective. I would love to be her. Of friend. course, if, from a nosy perspective. Also, I, do I think, think she's, she's really, really, really nice. I think she's got, like, everyone says Same. that she's so lovely. Okay. Even though she can be a bit. Yeah. Okay, fine. We'll go with Hayley Beebs. Um, Beebs no, wait, come. there's someone really great that's really funny. We're literally forgetting about them. Who the fuck is it? Al Pacino. Okay. Or oh, Morgan Freeman. Okay, yeah, you've always loved Morgan Freeman. I, I don't know. I've always... Oh, oh, Robert, like... Robert De Niro. Oh, yeah, he'd be a legend. He would be sick. Oh, Brad Pitt, obviously, just because I'd literally lick his drink when he left the room. <laughs> you, that, you, you changed the sentence as it was coming out. Lick his... <laughs> Drink because he left. Off the room. D DB, we um VB. Yeah, Victoria Beckham, not so much David. Yeah, Victoria Beckham. Yeah. Oh my she's god, Eve Longoria, cool. obviously. Oh my god, how did you leave that out? Yeah, she's my numero. Honestly, you know? that would be really, really good. Right, maybe we leave it there. Yeah, we leave it there. But I've got that little present. Oh my god, I'm really dredging this. Okay, I haven't got you anything to give. No, I got us matching on. This is Stop. this is for friendsgiving and for just our friendship. Oh my god, you sweet. And we have to wear them all the time. Oh my god, oh yeah. <laughs> no, you sweet angel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Melissa has got open hearts broken. I know, and then I'm connected to you. Sweet. We can connect them together. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why Wait, was can that... someone actually please tell me where the fuck you found me? Claire's accessories. Why are you going to oh buy them? Oh, my God. Is it actually Claire's accessories? Yes. How good. really nostalgic for me. I know, so nostalgic. They were the best thing ever. Stop <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for the thoughtful gift. Lil sister. Yeah, yeah. Is that what it says? I... Wait, uh, I can't take... What does yours say? <laughs> Big <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny. 
funny. So for anyone who is listening and not watching, I have got Melissa friendship necklace from Classic Accessories and it says big sis, open like a half of the heart and the other half of the heart says little sis and it's fluorescent every colour of the rainbow. And it's like one of those like stretchy like... Yeah, what they chokers. They're called yeah, a choker. Yeah, the stretchy choker thing and then it's really, yeah, it's special. It's special. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Have a fab day. Love and you. And have fab Friendsgiving. Bye.